Initially, I planned for my second video to be about choosing a character and forming a basic game plan based on what tools to use at what ranges. I wanted prospective players to be able to rapidly start competing, so I had plans to suggest alternate tools whenever the need to combo would arise. I thought about it and that doesn't really work, not to mention it would build poor muscle memory, so I'm here today to teach you about combos. I'm going to explain a little about what combos are, the different types of combos, and how to find the best combos for your character. Before I begin, I advise everyone watching to download a smartphone app called Frame Assistant Tool, or FAT. It's the most elaborate frame data resource I've encountered thus far, and I contributed heavily to it. FAT actually has a web-based client now called FAT Online, and I've linked it in the description. When you hit your opponent in Street Fighter, there's a small period where he's left reeling. This part. Different attacks can cause the opponent to reel for different amounts of time. This reeling state is called hit stun for short, since it's the stunning effect from a hit. Usually, the opponent can hold back to block attacks, but the opponent cannot start blocking while he's still reeling in hit stun. A combo is any sequence of attacks that cannot be blocked if the first hit connects. Pretty much any hit during the opponent's reel counts as a combo. The big exception is, you cannot conventionally combo into throws. Unless it's a critical art throw. There are four main types of combos. The first are natural combos, which are simply single attacks with multiple hits. Most people don't even consider these attacks when thinking about combos, since for the most part they function exactly the same as single hit attacks. They can, however, break single hits of armor. The next kind of combo is a link combo. With a link combo, a first attack fully resolves, but leaves the opponent in hit stun long enough for you to hit them again. In order to do link combos, you need to start with attacks that leave the opponent reeling longer than it takes for you to finish your attack. Most characters only have a few attacks they're capable of linking from. There's an easy way to look up which normals will link into which normals, which is where Frame Assistant Tool comes in. Let's take a little moment to explain the basics of what frame data is. Here is a screenshot of some of Ryu's frame data. There's a lot of information on here, so let's break it down. All of the numbers are numbers of frames. SF5 plays at 60 frames per second, so one frame is 1 60th of a second. Frames are the easiest way of keeping time in a fighting game. Now, there's five columns, startup, active, recovery, advantage on block, and advantage on hit. Startup refers to how quickly the move hits after you push the button. You can see on here stand LP takes three frames to hit, while stand HK takes 10. Back to the game, it's very apparent that Ryu's standing light punch is a bit quicker than his standing hard kick. Active refers to the amount of time the attack can hit the opponent, while Recovery refers to the amount of time it takes to regain control of your character. Those two aren't so important for the most part, so we'll skip them for now. Besides, they're entailed in the final two columns, which give us the numbers we actually want. Advantage on Block refers to the relative times you and the opponent recover after the opponent blocks that attack. Ryu Standing Medium Punch is positive 1, which most people just shorten to plus 1. This means that Ryu finishes the attack one frame before the opponent finishes blocking. That sounds like they basically recover at the same time, but consider this. If I do a light kick at the earliest possible time after having my medium punch blocked, and the opposing Ryu does a light kick at the earliest possible time after blocking me, mine will hit before his can since I started my move one frame sooner. Note the counter hit. Counter hits occur when you hit someone out of the startup of their attack. Now, look at Crouch Hard Kick. It's minus 11 on block, indicated in red. This means if the opponent blocks my Crouching Hard Kick, they recover from blocking 11 frames before I finish attacking. If they hit me within that window, that hit is guaranteed. We call that guaranteed hit a punish, since the opponent can freely punish me for hitting that button. Moves that can be punished are generally called punishable or unsafe, referring to the amount of risk you're taking by using them. Moves that cannot be punished are called safe. 
I know it seems like a segue to be talking about safety during a video about combos, but we're going to come back to this really soon, I promise. Now that final column is advantage on hit, and between that and the first column, start up, we can figure out what kinds of link combos we can do. Ryu stand medium punch is plus 6 on hit, which means it gives us 6 frames to hit the opponent in time for it to combo. Picking two random normals from the startup column, I can see that Crouch MK hits in 6 frames, and Crouch HK hits in 7. This means Ryu standing medium punch has enough time to link into crouching medium kick before the opponent recovers. However, the opponent will recover in time to block, and potentially punish, Ryu standing medium punch to crouching heavy kick. So stand medium punch into crouch medium kick is a link, standing medium punch into crouching heavy kick is not a link. I'd like to say now that counter hits give you two extra frames to link. Ryu standing medium punch is plus eight on counter hit, enough to combo into crouch heavy kick. There are a few other small considerations when it comes to linking attacks. Medium punch should give the player enough time to link into light punch, but if you try it in game, you'll find that you simply don't have the reach to hit them. Medium punch into medium punch will generally link, but it won't work if you're too far away. You probably noticed that there's no numbers listed for jumping normals. Jumping normals recover as soon as you hit the ground, so the recovery is variable based on how far along you are in the jump when you hit the opponent. With good timing, jump hard normals are usually at least plus 10, so you can generally combo into almost all of your grounded attacks. The next type of combo is a cancel. These are a bit harder to explain. If you do a special move during the hit of certain normals, you can interrupt the normal's natural recovery with the special move. Here is Ryu's crouching medium kick cancelled into a Hadouken. Because Ryu's crouching medium kick can be cancelled into special moves, we call it special cancelable. As a general rule, almost all light and medium normals are special cancelable, as well as some hard normals. You can also cancel all of these moves into your critical art. Though, not all cancels are combos. Most light attacks don't reel the opponent long enough for a cancelled special move to combo. Of the moves that aren't special cancelable, you can still sometimes do these super cancels. Some special moves can also super cancel. and you can even do an entire sequence of normal, special, critical art. Additionally, you can cancel almost all normals into V-Trigger, usually everything but your overheads. V-Trigger doesn't cancel into anything itself, but it can give you enough time to link into other attacks. Certain characters can also cancel their special moves into V-Trigger, though this is rare. I've made an approximate map of the cancelling hierarchies. Which moves are cancelable and which aren't is on a purely move by move basis, but once you're good with cancelling you should be able to figure out pretty quickly what you can do and what you can't. Certain characters also have predefined strings of specific normals cancelled into specific other normals. These are called target combos, and they'll be listed in the move list. The final kind of combo is a juggle. Certain attacks will leave the opponent in a fall that ends in a knockdown, and only specific attacks can hit them before they hit the ground. These attacks have what people call pursuit property or juggle potential. There aren't that many instances of this in Street Fighter V, so it generally only takes a few minutes to learn all the opportunities your character has to juggle, and all the things they can juggle into. So what are combos for? There's two main reasons to combo. The first is based primarily in maximizing damage. These are called punish combos. They seek to hit the opponent as hard as possible after they do an unsafe move. Many punish combos are unsafe themselves, however, so you usually only want to do these combos when they're guaranteed. Like during punish opportunities, hence the name. 
Most characters only need to know a few punish combos, with the main variable being how much meter they want to spend. You only need to know a few because you only want to be using your highest damage combo avenue every time. The second reason to use combos is to confirm. As Ryu, my Shoryuken does good damage and is rewarding to land. But if I just cancel straight into it, I generally have no idea whether the opponent will get hit or block. And it's very unsafe. Certain combos will allow me to visually see whether I'm hitting or being blocked, and only then decide whether I want to complete the combo. Since you're confirming that the opponent is getting hit and not blocking, this is called a hit confirm, and combos that allow you to hit confirm are called hit confirm combos, or just confirm combos. It helps to know a lot of different confirm combos, so you can turn many different scenarios into your rewarding attacks. There's also a third camp of combos that are safe, and thus don't terribly care if the opponent gets hit or blocks. These are usually just called pressure strings rather than combos since they won't always hit. You might be saying at this point, Wow Befail, this is a lot to take in, I'm not sure I can possibly figure out combos myself. Well, you don't need to. There's an entire section of FAT devoted to each character's optimal combos, showing the exact damage and stun values. The ones with the little info symbol next to them even have additional notes within. And the person who figured out these optimal combos, made the notes about their use, and compiled the damage and stun values, was me. These combos are pretty easy to read once you know how. ST means standing, CR means crouching, XX denotes a cancel, and a comma denotes a link. Additionally, CH refers to counter hit only, and CC refers to crush counter. I also plan to re-release my bread and butter combo video series, fully updated, to this channel within the coming weeks with new sections intended to teach people how to play the character. If you can do all of these combos reliably, then you'll have a pretty good handle on that character. So now let's talk about how to practice using this sample combo. The first step in learning a combo is learning each individual piece of the combo. I've broken down this combo into three chunks, as you can see here. If we do each individual chunk, we should be able to piece together the whole thing. First, go to training mode. Set the dummy to block after first attack in the training menu. You don't have to do this, but it'll give you a good sense of when you're doing it right and when you're doing it wrong. Now this first chunk is a simple link. You just have to hit medium punch, then crouching heavy punch. Just hit the two attacks in sequence. If your second attack never comes out, you were too fast. If your second attack is blocked, you were too slow. You should get a pretty good idea of the timing you need after a few tries. It's not very precise in SF5. Now for the next part of the combo. Crouch hard punch cancelled into Hadoken. Most beginners struggle with cancels because they need to be inputted very quickly, but having the right mindset is important. What most people don't realize is the speed required to do a cancel into Hadoken is the same speed required to simply do the Hadoken by itself. Ryu is crouching during both the down and the down towards of your Hadoken motion, and if you hit hard punch during these parts of the special move input, you'll get crouching hard punch. So don't think about it in terms of, I have to do crouching hard punch and then instantly do a hadoken, or you'll have a hard time. Think about it like, I have to do a hadoken and the crouching hard punch during the motion. The final part of the combo is hadoken into critical art. Here's the motion for Ryu's hadoken, and the motion for his critical art. The cancelable window for a hadoken is very small, and since the motion for his super is so large, that combo would be very hard but you might notice the entire motion of the Hadoken is inside the second motion. So a series of inputs like this actually contains the motion for the initial Hadoken and the motion for the entire super, and is as easy to do as two quick Hadokens in sequence. This trick is called buffering and can be used to make a ridiculous number of situations in Street Fighter much easier. So if you can do each individual part of this combo reliably,
you should be able to eventually do the whole thing. So here's your homework. I've linked the Google Drive in the description that contains some optimal combos for each character. I want you guys to open up one of them for a character you like, and take that character to training mode, and see if you can't read and execute some of those combos. If you want a little extra practice, you could open up trial mode in Street Fighter V and see if you can do all of that character's trials. I'm going to get working on those updated combo videos. Remember to subscribe to this channel. And once again, the music for this video was composed by my brother, so if you're interested in that, check him out too. Link in the description.